Hey everybody, David here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing my D uh, superhero uh, podcast. It feels like a DC-only podcast right now because uh, there's not always a lot of Marvel TV to talk about, uh, and some shows I don't watch. Like, I know The Gifted is on right now. I, I watched the first season of The Gifted, but I, I'm going to admit it, it was pretty forgettable for me. <laughs> Uh, so I haven't been keeping up with season two. Um, Legion season one, I really liked, but uh, again, I didn't catch up with season two. I hear good things about Runaways and Cloak and Dagger. Um, I want to check out Runaways for sure, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, the Marvel stuff right now, the only things I keep up with is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and... Uh, the Netflix Marvel stuff. So, and look, once Disney Plus comes out, uh, I I want to get that right away because the Loki series, the Winter Soldier and Falcon series, and Scarlet Witch and Vision. I mean, those are the shows I really want to watch for Marvel. So, uh, Marvel will be killing it very soon. Uh, in the Arrowverse, I love it, but man, if I had to choose between the Arrowverse and from what I'm hearing on Disney Plus including the Star Wars stuff. Uh Disney Plus has my Disney has all my money right now. Uh right now, let's talk about all the great DC TV shows because I'm loving all of them uh this season so far. It's been really great. Uh let's start off with Black Lightning. Uh we are on season 2, episode 4. Um The Book of Consequences, chapter 4, uh Translucent freak uh yeah I, ju I i just watched this episode right now literally and um it's all about tobias whale scheming to get out of prison and proving his innocence because guess what jefferson doesn't really have no proof on tobias whale killing his father a long time ago and uh, without proof, you know, it's hard to keep a criminal like that in prison, unfortunately. Um, so Tobias Whale, by the end of this episode, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, sorry, uh, he gets out of prison. Um, this was a really good episode. I really, I really liked it. I think it's the best episode so far this season. Uh, I have been enjoying Black Lightning this season so far, but out of all the DC TV shows, it's the one that's been giving me the least uh, of what I really want to see. Uh, but this episode showed, no, they still have some tricks up to their sleeves. So they, they're they saving some of the really juicy stuff, definitely. And this was one of the first big hints of that. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the stuff with uh, the daughters, uh, Jennifer and Anissa. Um, you know, both of them are dealing with growing pains, I guess. Uh, Jennifer wants to become um or is it anissa i'm getting confused with the two daughters already uh anissa is the older one okay uh anissa wants to uh move out of the house she wants to be an independent woman she doesn't like that her father gives her crap and um yeah, so uh, they kind of, at first they have a little spat together in the episode, but then Jefferson says, you know, what if we give you uh, my father's old home? And uh, it looks like they're they're going to start respecting each other a little bit better. Uh, as for Jennifer, you know, she's dealing with the return of Khalil, uh, who is, I don't know what's up with Khalil. By the way, I, I, I called it as soon as the opening scene started where Khalil comes in and starts killing everybody, including the the new young guy who can read minds. Um, and I, I called it right there. This is all a dream. This isn't real. Uh, and yeah, funny enough, it turns out to be that way. Uh, Khalil, do we want Khalil to be good or should Khalil die? I don't know. Uh, I think Khalil was okay in the beginning, and now he's been doing a lot of bad shit, like almost killing Jefferson. You don't kill the main character of the show, or even try to, or else you're going to be an enemy of the people. So you, you tried to kill Jefferson, and now you want us to forgive you? 
I don't know. It's it's kind of hard. Also, I don't like this principal that they have in charge of the school right now. He is a dick and needs to be get out of there and put Jefferson back in charge of the school. I don't like these dick principals that think they're all that. And uh, when someone gives them good advice, like, yeah, Jefferson, I agreed with Jefferson, everything he was saying about, like, you shouldn't kick out these kids from the school because they could grow up and be one of those uh, kids with a gun and shooting people. Um, or who knows what else th they'd be doing. They need to be in school and be educated. And uh, the principal's like, you know, we got to set an example. It's like, shut up and get out of here. Um for the most part, yeah, Black Lightning was good this week. Um, definitely one of the better episodes this week. Uh, all the episodes were great, but uh, there there's always a weak one, right? And even the weakest one to me was still entertaining. I'll get to that one uh, very soon. So let's get into Supergirl next. Uh, Supergirl was Season 4, Episode 5, Parasite Lost. That's how you get... The Return of Parasite, a uh, popular Superman villain, for those of you that don't know. He, he, the character uh, sort of appear. It, the way they do Parasite is that it's an actual parasite that infest, uh, it goes inside of someone and gives them the ability to steal people's powers uh, or metahumans' powers. In this case, aliens, uh, because Agent Liberty wants uh parasite to, to kill the humans using or kill the aliens using their powers let's remember agent liberty played by sam witwer uh wants uh aliens to suffer right and so he's fighting for regular humans um this movie uh, this season definitely has a political feel uh which i keep saying they have to be careful with because uh you don't want to uh alienate people that might be trump supporters uh but this goes more against the extremists obviously um <clears throat> which maybe do need a little knock on the head once in a while i don't know um i i thought this episode was really good i i really enjoyed it uh i just no yeah i i enjoyed it very thoroughly i think sam witwer is killing it this season um I, I love him in this role. Um, th there was a little bit of a Darth Maul voice-sounding moment in his voice at one point in the episode that I thought was cool. Um, when he was wearing the mask at one point, talking to the guy uh, with the parasite inside of him. Um, I, I kind of wish Parasite was a little bit like the comic books, where you know he, Rudy Jones was Parasite in the comics. And uh, he has the costume, but they never gave him a costume. I mean, I get it, and maybe this is better for budget reasons. Um, I just kind of wish we got the parasite we all know. Um, for the most part, I oh, I thought it was really cool that we got a moment with uh, Sam Witwer confronting Jimmy. And he, he says something. I forgot what the exact line was, but when he called James Olsen, uh, James Olsen, uh, he, he kind of reminded me like, hey, Jimmy, watch out because uh, he killed you back in Smallville. So, uh, which is true. If you watch Smallville season eight, where Sam Witwer was playing Davis Bloom, uh, D Davis Bloom kills Jimmy Olsen at the end of season eight. <laughs> Uh, we find out that it's not the real Jimmy Olsen. It's actually Jimmy's older brother who was made up just so uh, Sean Ashmore can play uh, the real Jimmy Olsen in the series finale of Smallville. But uh, yeah, anyways, <laughs> before this becomes a Smallville review, uh, it was just funny to me for that brief second. Uh, John Jones and Kara were um, investigating a death, uh, a death that was connected to a girl who we find out was uh, the the daughter um, of I forgot the character's name, but uh, Ahmed Ahmed I think it was I don't remember now, but uh, he was an older character that could heal people using his powers, but he could only do that with I guess uh, other aliens. He said he couldn't do it with humans, but he hoped to heal the human heart uh, to bring them all together. Uh, yeah, I thought that was that was a cool little storyline going on there. Um, 
for the most part, yeah, uh, Supergirl was was uh, really good. I know uh, Alex was dealing with her own issues with uh, the, the the one in charge of the DEO, the co- the colonel, um, and uh, Alex kind of defended John that he should be in charge, but she didn't feel that he should. Um, yeah, that was all cool. I liked it. It was a good episode. Uh, moving on to Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow is the one that I would say was the weak episode, the weakest one of this week. And I've been loving Legends. I still love this episode, though. I And I don't want people to get that wrong. That just because I'm saying it's the weakest episode this week uh, doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I really did. It was a funny episode. It was a fun little episode, you know, getting to see uh, Sarah and uh, Ava turn into children was kind of cool uh and then uh trying to fit in with the rest of the the kids to find out what's going on with the missing kids uh yeah i thought it was a really cool episode what they had to battle uh against nate wasn't in this episode and apparently we find out that nate is actually um Nate is actually oh the actor who plays Nate was going through uh something with his real life child who was just born and he had to be by uh her side so that's why he wasn't in the episode I remember reading that on Twitter recently this week um I I really do love that Constantine uh getting to see him mingle this season is a lot of fun I, I liked seeing him in a different sort of situation. If you go back and watch Constantine's show, it's very different from Legends. Uh, and to see him fit so perfectly into Legends of Tomorrow is is really interesting. And I did like that we got to see a little bit of an interaction between him and Ray in this episode. We got to see a little bit more of that. Uh, obviously, we got the clone Amaya. It's not Amaya, but she's she's uh, she looks like Amaya. Um, Charlie, that's it. Charlie from the last episode. Nate still doesn't know that uh, she's on the ship. I don't know if she'll be a regular this season, or maybe this is their way of keeping the actress who played Amaya as this character. But then, like, what is she going to do? She has no powers unless she keeps shape shifting once they figure. But then she's going to go back to the way she used to be or they're going to come up with a dumb excuse like oh i like the way i look now as this character maybe i'll keep myself as this uh i i'll hate that if that turns out to be the case um because i think it's pushing it i mean it's it's like you guys are so desperate to keep this actress and i agree i like her as an actress Uh, she's beautiful and talented and I just think, look, sometimes, no matter how much you like an actor, if you feel that you don't have much for her anymore, if you don't need her anymore, let her. it's okay to let her go. Sometimes it's okay to let certain characters go. And uh, that's what I feel uh, the writers do on a lot of these DC shows on CW sometimes. I feel like they don't want to let certain actors go because they love them so much. And as a fan, I get it, but as a fan, I don't want them to overstay their welcome if they're not needed anymore. Um, But then that's what will make it great is if you keep them in a way, if you send them off in a way where maybe they could come back again one day. Don't keep them if it's not necessary. Let them go if you don't find any more uh, ways to uh, improve them. That's what I would say um or or to develop them because sometimes it is annoying when a character doesn't develop anymore um obviously this is an all new character so they could develop it in a different way i just don't want her to stay as an a, a maya just because they want to keep that actress i think look you could do this new character charlie who's a shapeshifter that sounds pretty cool uh but you shouldn't keep the actress just because uh you have this shapeshifter that can look like her just because you want to keep that specific actress uh i just think it's cheap uh moving on to arrow season seven episode five i keep forgetting we're on arrow season seven um 
Oliver is in prison. Um, and he teams up with an unlikely ally, which I thought was uh, very, very cool. Um, Talia. Talia al Ghul, we find out, was still alive. Last time we saw her was in Season 5 on the island fighting her sister, Nysa. And, um, yeah, this was really cool. I really did love everything with Oliver in prison, I think, has been highly entertaining. I actually really like uh, a, a Felicity and uh laurel laurel from earth too. her their roman bromance i guess or sister mance i don't know i i like their friendship that's going on together i think they're making a pretty cool pair and katie cassidy seems to be enjoying it like i i was watching an old old episode of season four uh the constantine episode of arrow and katie cassidy she was not in that episode. She was in it, but she was like, she, you could tell she did not care. She she was like, man, I want to get out of this episode. Uh, this episode, I feel like this season she's been caring a lot more lately. Like she's bringing her A game, I feel, and really pulling out the stops. Um, last season, she was doing great when she got to be evil. But then it felt like she was kind of bored at the end when they were turning her good. She was like, man, I don't want to be good. I want to stay bad. And in these couple of episodes, this episode and the last one, she kind of has her bad edge to her still, which I like. Uh, so maybe they're finding that balance now for Laurel. Uh, because I did find her highly ever since she turned good. This is the episode I think they played with her the best uh, so far um and yeah the felicity team up i i'm really enjoying too uh diggle diggle and um curtis or no yeah that's right diggle asks curtis to go undercover for argus yeah, and curtis i know wasn't uh feeling up to it um yeah i like that stuff too that 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 was all great um, but for me, the highlight of the episode is always with Oliver because I think Oliver is the main character of the show and should always be focused on. Uh, it's kind of annoying when the show takes the focus off of him and focuses on Felicity instead. Um, even though I like Felicity, sometimes she could be a little annoying when it gets to that those dramatic moments. Um, but this episode stayed nicely focused on Oliver. Um that I felt uh, this was a really great episode. And finally, we have The Flash, uh, Season 5, Episode 5, All Dolled Up. And uh, this was a creepy-looking villain who was... Uh, what's it, What was the villain's name? D uh, not, it's not the doll maker, it's the rag doll. Okay. And, uh, oh, voiced by Phil Lamar. Uh, Phil, Mo Phil Lamar, for those of you that don't know, was the voice of the Green Lantern in the Justice League animated series, or even Justice League Unlimited. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool, knowing that, that he played, uh, he played, uh, the voice of Ragdoll. Now, now I gotta go back and rewatch the episode and, uh, check that out. Um... I, I'm finally happy we got uh, Nora and Iris talking it out. Because last week I did say that I was kind of annoyed that Nora was blaming her mother or angry at her mother for things she hasn't done yet. And clearly there's going to be a reason, a reasonable explanation. It has to be a really good explanation by this point at why Iris did what she did or else or maybe everything that Nora is doing now will change that future because even Iris says well now I won't be doing whatever I do uh, but I think maybe it will come to pass but we'll find out the reason why a really good reason why she does it maybe we'll find out by the end of the season or we'll find out down the road I think it has something to do with what happens in 2024 
Uh, but it could also have something to do with what happens here. One or the other. Uh, because let's face it, by the time we get to 2024, Flash is already going to be on its 10th season. That will be the end where it shows the newspaper clipping. That's going to be the finale of the Flash season. Yeah, the the Flash. That, that will probably be where they're planning on ending the series. Flash season 10. And that will be the end of season 10. And... Um, I mean, we got five more seasons, guys, until season 10. Think about it that way. We're already on season five. Five more seasons and we're there. Or four more seasons and we're there. Um, so, it, you know, Arrow's already on season seven. They only have three more seasons to get to. Man, I remember when Smallville had ten seasons. Like, it goes by as faster than we realize. Like, right now, we're looking at it in, like, five more years. That's going to be forever. When you get to my age, 35 years old, time goes by quick. So uh, <laughs> um, you'll see, especially when we have like so many movies and so many other shows to keep track to. Like by the time you know it, season 10 is going to be here faster than we all uh, think it is. Um, I did like that it was um, Cecile that kind of showed Nora uh, the the good things about uh, her mother, because Nora was being kind of like angsty, uh, right? Because that's what the CW is, um, in learning about her mother a little bit more. And I'm like, yeah, you should be learning why your mother did what she did before she got to that point. Clearly, there was a reason for it. And uh, she was like hesitant on learning about Iris. So uh, when Cecile was telling stories about Barry, Nora realizes they were actually about Iris, and that's when Nora became a little bit more interested in her mother, which I liked. Um, Joe was not in this episode. Uh, as far as we know, Jesse L. Martin is on a sick leave uh, because he injured his back, I guess, during the summer. And uh, some people noted that that in the last, the first three episodes or four episodes of this season. Joe was sitting down a lot lately or leaning on a wall or something like that lately. Uh, so, yeah, no, Jesse L. Martin. I don't know how long he's going to be gone for. Hopefully he'll be back soon because uh, his presence was kind of missed in this episode. I, I really do like Joe and his one-on-one -on -one talks with uh, with Barry. Even though Barry Barry's growing up pretty quickly. In this episode, there was that one scene where Nora and Iris are bonding and uh barry's like those are my girls he's he's like proud that they're like talking to each other and 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 um and getting along finally and he has that smile of a true father that's like happy that his his wife and his daughter are talking things out he had that like those are my girls getting along um <laughs> i don't know that's how i felt while watching that scene uh yeah, the doll, the rag doll was was creepy as hell. Um I really did like him as a villain. I know I noticed the cuts though that they made a lot. They made a lot of cuts to make it look like he was turning his head and stuff. So when you look for those cuts purposely, it it kind of is a little distracting, but for the most part I think it worked pretty well. Um yeah, it was it was a good really a really good episode where um I think I I enjoyed a, a lot of it. That was going on like uh who else um uh, what's his name ralph 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 is impressing me this season last season if you followed my reviews on the flash uh you know i was kind of annoyed by ralph in, in some episodes quite a bit of episodes um but this season yeah ralph is working out really nicely for me and i i'm happy he's on the show now like now he fits in really well i think they found that really nice tone with him um other than that guys look this has been a really good week for dc tv uh i know i'm rushing through this but it's saturday i'm kind of tired right now uh but i wanted to talk about these shows and put my thoughts out there uh about them and uh i did so i'm very happy about that and uh, i want to know what you guys think of these latest episodes which one was your favorite my favorite this see this week it's probably arrow yeah I, I don't know flash was really good this week too 
it's between Flash and Arrow this week. A uh, Supergirl was really good too. Uh, Black Lightning, Legends was my least favorite, but it was still entertaining. All the shows were great this week. Uh, so tell me your thoughts. And until next week, guys, take care.